Good evening on this November 15th, 2020. It's 11.28 p.m. And I literally just recorded a podcast and I just dumped it because I was complaining too much. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to say here that's going to come remotely close to what I was talking about in the last one. My left leg is on fire. And and in my need to not to set my body to medications and things like that or overdosing on pills or weed or alcohol, whatever, I take the pain till my nerves start, you know, I won't take anything unless it gets to that point where You know, like my nerves are shaking and I can't think of anything else. Then I'll go in my drawer and I'll take an Advil or Tylenol PM. But nine times out of ten, when I'm in this mood, I try to be as natural as I can be. I don't know if that helps or it hurts, but I try to be as natural as I can get it. And it's really, it's a stiffness there. It's so stiff. It's so st- I just want to pick my feet up off the floor and just like levitate around my house. I don't even want to walk. I'm arrested. My soul feels arrested. My body feels tense. And I want to I want to release some type of pressure. It's an ugly pressure, but I want to release it. I want to get it out. I I look at myself in the mirror when I'm in my bathroom and I see the part of me that did good. I see her. I see the one that waited, that said no to sex with random that I see her. The one that every day, 24 hours a day for the past 18 years abstain from sex I see where my body came back into itself and settled down I see the health I see these things I see the innocence even though I have scars you, it's weird if you ever seen somebody that's scarred and innocent it's like when you see a burn victim or somebody with a disability you see that they're innocent and that they're pure but then you see the scar too and it's like I almost feel like that kind of person. Almost. And I want to I want to feel better about my scars. I want to feel better about them. My mom came in my room. She she tried to help me last night. I have this ponytail that I brought like a month or so ago, maybe longer. And she maybe she said put it on. Put a hat on and take some pictures. Now, when I did that, something about the actual texture of the hair was quite close to my natural hair. And I look so much better with long hair. I always have. When my hair covers my ears, a part of my body is like like I talked about in my hair loss. My first actual podcast was about hair loss. When my hair covers my ears, it's like... A part of me relaxes and I calm down and I seem more sensual than anything. And this this casual diva comes out and she's so diva-ish. And I, I love that about myself. I love that feeling. But that whole pamper keep up, I've never, I don't have a job where I can do that every single day. Me, like having my hair done and being in the right clothes and stuff like that, it's you have to practice that every day so you develop a character and a, a personality within that type of updo. And I've I've always just skirted by on that innocence, like as long as I'm doing my job and this, that, and the third, why deem into excess? And now 
in my early 40s, I'm lacking that character that women have been perfecting since their teenage years. And now they're in their 40s and they have a staple look because they've gone through all the changes. And now when you know so-and-so, you know exactly what it is. That's their, I don't have a staple look. And I should have been had one a long time ago. And my need to be beautiful. I mean, a, a, a beautiful that timeless, one that's gone through test, test, trivial test, important test. Women who need to prove that I'm not stepping out of my zone. And then me having to remind them that they're all out of pocket. Not every single one, but most of them are because of the, the, the fear that it's gathering me having to step out of this place before impossibilities happen because impossibilities can happen with someone who is correct but is being held against their will to a certain area because it's convenient see this is when out-of-pocket things start happening because me being in myself I'm not addressing the next wrong thing that's going to happen so the wrong things compile and compile and then all of a sudden, me, me and my rightness, if I touch it, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my God, how did that happen? I was like, nah, I'm just not doing that. I'm doing this. And in me being that ignorant or me being that present within myself, am I preventing my own, uh, my own uh, way out of this place, out of this hellhole, whatever they call it, I don't know. I don't want to think about blossoming into my body at this point because this is what it is. Um, I'm spreading into my limbs sexually. Not that I'm having it, but my body is like trying to reach into places to see if there's room there for excitement or feelings or anything like that. I thank God because celibacy is at this place. Celibacy has boxing gloves on. And she's bobbing and weaving in there. And she says, you know what? You have a right to feel this way. And she's haul punching me into this part of myself. And she said, you know what? I hope you feel this way. And then she turns around and she socks me into this part of myself. Because believe it or not, when I used to fiend for sex, I thought it was all about the pounding part. When he's pounding on top of you and then you're making all the noise, that's what I thought it was. Honey child, let me tell you how bad I'm feeding for some head. Oh my God. Hold on, let me take a breath. I am fiending. I am bouncing in my underwear and I'm on my period at that and I'm fiending for head. This is how bold I'm getting in my approach to it. And I haven't even told anybody about this. <sighs> like, I am a thickum and I want some thickum type head. And I am not kidding. And the dangerous part is, I want it in the raw. And I cannot. I cannot. And the more I want it, the more dangerous I feel. And the more I want to get a gun and start shooting things. Jesus. I'm just, oh, I'm cracking my own bones and needing this to happen. And grabbing thin air as if it was the back of a man's head. This is how I've been feeling. This is the boldness. Like, my celibacy is like, what? You want it? Like, what? Go ahead and take it. Bow. And she punches me into believing it. Not only do I want the head, I actually want to give it too. Like, almost like... The throbbing I'm feeling down there, I want to match it in my throat. And I think that's how you're supposed to feel. It's not wrong. I don't want to do it to a random person. I need to do it to the person I'm interested in. 
to do that to. I want to, I just want to go, I just want to lift off. It's a lift off and I want to go. That's all it is. I'm, I want some kissing. I want you to talk. My ear is, is the battery of this thing. You're going to have to get as close. You have to get in my ear and say things that will make a chef drop his most expensive steak on the floor after he's been preparing it for an hour. Like that kind of talk. Like say things to me that make my imagination say, why didn't I put that in my album? Why didn't I put that in War So New? That would have been perfect for that scene between uh, Ithagale Gale and her husband, Broses. That would have been perfect. Say things that make the toes click, like, oh, like, that make, like, meanings that don't make no sense. Like, you try to make a meaning out of it, and it doesn't make no sense. Like, God, I'm bringing him up again, but I don't give a fuck. I am knowledge. He says things on his TikTok post that put me in that frame of mind. Like, he said this one day, like, he, like, watched his face. And then the caption above it says, my girl, when she says, I can't wait to get that beard wet. And then he's just washing his face like, girl, I was there before you even thought about it. Like, you got to hear that in your ear while your bodies are gyrating. So that air can start working in your thoughts. And then your brain will start connecting feelings in your body. And then your body will start reacting. And then you can make the noise. Because now you know what you're making noises to. This is what I've been thinking about all this time. And I've been building within myself. But it's now that I have to I have to keep suffering through my celibacy. If my celibacy isn't growing and growing, I'm being celibate for nothing. Just somebody who, yeah, I've been in jail, yo, and I haven't sold one drug. Nah, son. You've been in jail. And you haven't sold any drugs because you can't sell drugs in jail. That doesn't make you a better person. Because when you get out and you have the ability to do so, will you do it? That's the point. Me being celibate because there's just no dudes around that don't make the celibacy correct. When my celibacy suffers and then it becomes violent and it forces me into my true desires like what I really want to happen I really want you to taste this stomach acid I really do and I don't think it's stomach acid it's stomach acid it is I want you to tell me if it tastes like pee I need you to tell me that I need you to tell me if I don't put too much coconut oil on and if it's in there I need you to tell me if that shit tastes good I need you to tell me that shit and there's only one way you can tell me and if I fart in your face, tell me. You know, because I'm gaseous and the fart will come out and I don't care if it come out. I don't care. It'll come out and I'll like it. And if you want a brumskis, I'm all for the brumskis. Anyway, see, 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 this is... I got to talk about it. I Googled this shit before I went to bed. And it says on Google, the only way to lessen sexual stress is to talk about it. And now I'm talking about it. My celibacy has triggers. It's not just me not having sex. It's the act of being dormant and it has pulses in it. Now these pulses, when I have an urge or when I think I've graduated to a feeling, it pushes me to that feeling. It pushes me there. It says you have every God-given right to want that in the bed. You, you, There's nothing that says you can't have that. And now that we're filling up this space, the more it fills up, the more I'm being pushed to those areas. If you want anal sex, push it to it. I want that. I want this in the bed. I want that. I want him to put his hands on me. I want him to grab stuff, even if it leaves a mark. Put your hands there. I want to feel you like we're attached at the hip. We are attached at the hip, Jason. So, just so you know, stop acting like we're not. 